Hello, welcome to another introductory session on algorithm. In this session, we are going to talk about a technique called transform and conquer. In this technique, uh, the, the idea is take a problems instance, find an intermediate instance, transform it to an intermediate instance, and then find a solution for that. Why would we do that? Because the intermediate instance could be a simpler one to solve, or it could be uh, another representation which we are familiar with, or it could be an instance of another problem for which we know a good solution. Uh, let's see, uh, there is a technique called pre-sorting which is uh, in which we take an instance, uh, we take an un uh, unsorted list and sort it, which we call it as a simpler instance and then find a solution. Why do we call it as a simpler instance? Because for uh, many problems where which involve uh, finding a solution uh, of a list of, uh, list of elements, a sorted one is actually easier to do that. Let's see a few examples which demonstrate that. Uh, so here is a problem to find the largest uh, element in an array of n numbers. Uh, before coming into transform and conquer, I would like to discuss uh, uh, solutions with other approaches and then compare with this. Uh, a brute force approach is a, is a simple one where this, uh, it's, it's very straightforward. Uh, you start with the first element and uh, assume that as the largest one so far and then keep doing uh, keep compare uh, keep incrementally uh, comparing with the next element when when i'm processing the ith element i already know the largest uh, font so far up to i minus one element now compare that with uh, with the ith element and uh, we, among those two which one is larger is basically the largest font uh, so far up to ith element keep doing till nth element and then that is the uh, solution we are interested in and the next approach is uh, divide and conquer in this one, uh, uh, basically divide the whole problem into two sets and uh, find this uh, find the solution of each of them. That means the largest of each, uh, each of them, and uh, uh, the larger of these two solutions, these two results would be uh, the largest of uh, n elements. And uh, recursively keep doing it uh, till uh, you get a trivial case. Uh, the trivial case in this uh, here is one element because the largest of one element is uh, just the element itself. Now another technique, uh, decrease and conquer. Uh, the idea here is, assume that you know uh, how to find the largest of uh, n minus one elements, and then in, up, uh, and then extend that solution to find uh, largest of n elements. So the largest of n elements is larger of largest of n minus one elements and nth element itself. Now that is the recurrence, and uh, keep doing it recursively until you get a trivial case where trivial case is n equals to one. There is only one element in the list. Now, uh, the technique we are interested in is transform and conquer. In this one, it's a pre-sorting based technique. So we are going to sort it first, and on the sorted list, we are going to find the largest. But finding a large, finding the largest on a sorted list is very easy because that is at the end if it is already sorted in ascending order. Uh, so now let's compare uh, all of these in terms of time and space. Now the first three techniques, brute force, divide and conquer, and decrease and conquer, all of them uh, run in linear time. That means the time complexity of uh, all of them is theta of n. Now uh, they also take only uh, no extra memory other than maybe some constant memory. So all of them run in, in place. But transform and conquer, it takes a theta of n log n to sort it, and then theta of 1 to uh, find the largest. Even though finding the largest is very good, we, we have an expensive operation of sorting it. So the overall cost of uh, time complexity is theta of n log n, which is worse than all the three methods. And also, it needs uh, an array of uh, size n to store the sorted list. That means it is not an in-place algorithm. It needs a theta of n extra space. So it didn't perform well in either department, uh, but uh, nevertheless it made a point here. Let's see some other examples where uh, it, pre sorting method looks attractive. Now, here is an example where uh, with, with what we call element uniqueness of an array, to find the element uniqueness of an array. What, what does that mean is uh, whether all the elements in the array are unique or not. Right? So, uh, the brute force way of doing that is I would compare every pair of elements. If there is any pair of elements where both of them are same, then I would say the array is not unique. And if I don't find any such pairs, then I would say the array is unique. Essentially, I'm comparing every pair of elements here. 
So my uh, the worst case time complexity of this would be a theta of n squared. Now let's apply a pre-sorting based approach to it. So here I'm going to sort it first uh, with uh, with, a, with a good sorting algorithm, and then when the list is already sorted, to find whether the array is unique or not. Uh, if there if there is a pair of elements which are same, then they have to be next to each other because it's already sorted. So I don't have to compare every pair here. I just have to compare every consecutive pair, and there are only n minus one such consecutive pairs. I just keep comparing everything in a loop of n minus one iterations, and if if I find any of those consecutive pairs which are equal, then I would say the array is not unique. Otherwise, I would say array is unique in the end. The time complexity of this would be uh, theta of n log n for sorting, and then theta of n for scanning in the end. So overall, it is theta of n log n. But these are uh, the, the brute force approach we used took theta of n squared, so this is better than that. Right? Not that this is the only best available. We might actually find some other methods which are, which are as good as this, but this is a good one. Another example, uh, computing a mode uh, in an array. Mode of an array is basically the one which uh, the element which, which which repeats most of the time. That is the most frequent element of uh, of an array is the mode of the array. And how do we do it uh, in, in a brute force way? Uh, in a brute force way, I would start with the first element and then find how many times it, it appears in the whole list. And uh, remember that frequency as the mode frequency and that element as the mode. And then keep doing for the next elements incrementally. Every time find the frequency of that element. And uh, if that is more than the mode frequency we found so far, then update that as the mode frequency and then that element as the mode. And keep doing till the end of the array. And uh, whichever uh, whichever element uh, uh, repeats most number of times is the mode. Here again, essentially in the worst, in, uh, we are essentially comparing every pair of elements. So my time complexity would be again theta of n squared. Uh, let's see a, 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 a pre-sort based uh, approach for this one. Here I'm going to sort it first. I'm going to sort it first. And then uh, every time um, mode frequency is the one which, uh, which is counting how many times uh, uh, the the mode found so far repeats, and uh, every time I start with a run length, and I'm comparing uh, the run value is the one I'm starting here. So every time I compare the run value, that is ith element with uh, i plus run length element, if they are all equal, I just keep incrementing, and this condition ensures that we are not crossing the boundary boundary of the array. Uh, so at the end of it, the run length identify uh, indicates how many times the ith element uh, is, is repeating. That I compare with the mode frequency, and if that is greater, then we have a new mode frequency with a new mode value, right? And uh, I can just increase uh, i i with a uh, run length because uh, it is uh, i element is repeating so many times, right? And uh, so the time complexity of this would be uh, even though there are two while loops here, inner one runs for whatever the run length we call, and then outer one increments by that run length itself. That's how uh, uh, this is basically a, a, a linear time algorithm. That means it takes uh, theta of n time to find the mode after sorting. So uh, the time complexity of this would be uh, n log n to sort it and then theta of n to, uh, to find the mode. So overall it is theta of n log n. This is also better than the uh, brute force approach we just found. Now let's... Uh, Let's see another classical problem which is finding an element or searching for an element in an array. If you are using a brute force approach which we call sequential search or linear search which takes a theta of n time to search for an element. Right? If I use a pre-sorting based, I am going to take uh, a n log n time to sort it and then maybe if I use a, a binary search, I am going to find the element in, in log n time. So overall it is going to be n log n. So this is not better than even the linear search. But yeah, uh, we should consider the cases where if I want to search more number of times after sorting, maybe this at, at some, because every time searching is better here than the linear search, at some point, whatever the uh, extra effort I used it for sorting is going to be amortized and then it, it, it's going to break even. So at, after some sufficiently large number of searches for one sorting, this approach uh, is going to look better. So that's all. Uh, I had examples for pre-sorting. I have a couple of examples, uh, exercise uh, problems from Levitin's book. 
uh, you can try and solve this one and uh, let me see if you find any, any issue with that. So I'm going to talk about uh, the further uh, topics in, uh, in Transform and Conquer in probably in some other video. Thank you for listening. Bye.